That is done. Mm hmm. He's coming up. What is up guys? It's your boy Hunter Main Cacus and today, oh my goodness, we're going to be showcasing a phenomenal Hunter build. This is absolutely one of the most powerful builds in the entire game right now for PvE during Season of the Deep. And if you don't mind me saying, I think it is the most fun build to play in the entire game right now. It is just a blast and again, it is unbelievably effective. Did you ever want to kill everything you come across with melees easily while also being invisible essentially 100% of the time and having infinitely regenerating health? Like, sound pretty good? Well, that's this build. So let's go into what exactly makes this build function. So, starting things off with the subclass, we have firstly Gathering Storm as our super, because this is one of the best supers in the game, Mwah, chef's kiss, it is so good, of course we're going to use it. After that, you need Gambler's Dodge, because dodging near enemies fully recharges your melee ability. And then we're combining that with Combination Blow, because defeating targets with this ability also fully refills your class ability energy and restores a small amount of health. So, every time we get a melee kill, we recharge our class ability. We use our class ability, we get our melee back, and it is an endless and incredibly powerful loop. After that, our grenade is really up to you. I'm using pulse grenades. Honestly, flashbang to blind the enemy you plan on meleeing is not a terrible idea. But then moving on to the aspects, firstly we have flow state. Defeating a jolted target makes you amplified, and while you're amplified, your dodge recharges more quickly, and you're more resilient while dodging, which we're doing all the time. And then we have lethal current. So after dodging, your next melee attack has increased lunge range, jolts the target, and creates a damaging aftershock. Oh, and damaging any jolted target with melee attacks also blinds them. So what that means is what you've seen in the background gameplay. You are dodging, you're getting a melee, you're causing a jolt effect, which shoots out and mass damages anyone nearby. That's going to kill that guy because you just jolted them. You instantly get your class ability back so you can use it again. Do another jolt. Uh, kill a guy. Use a class ability. Get another jolt. And you're just constantly dodging and having jolted melees as much as you want. Now, after that, for the fragments, we have firstly, Spark of Resistance. Uh, surrounded means that you're more resilient to incoming damage. Obviously, fantastic. We've then got Spark of Ions. Defeating a jolted target, as you can imagine, that's pretty much everyone, creates an Ionic Trace. Then we've got Spark of Recharge, just to get a more regen if we are wounded and we really need it. And then lastly, we have Spark of Feedback. So if you take melee damage, you actually increase your outgoing melee damage, which is really good against more power powerful enemies because you're not able to kill them in a single smack, they're going to likely smack you back and then you're boosted with that extra damage. Now moving on from there, the key exotic in this build is actually the Assassin's Cowl. This thing is an absolute MVP right now. So it says Vanishing Execution. Powered melee final blows grant invisibility and restore a portion of your health and shields. Finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the duration of the invisibility and the amount of health and shields restored. This is unbelievably powerful with what we're doing because it means every time we get a melee kill, which again is happening all the time because we're jolting everything, we then become invisible, which is the optimal setup for making a melee build function. The invisibility is god tier. It lets you not only survive, because obviously you're in the fray, you're right up to enemies, you get that melee kill, and then suddenly becoming invisible lets you get out of a sticky situation. But it also lets you get offensive capabilities in the fact that you get to perfectly set up the next melee chain. You can do the dodging combo, get your jolt ready, all that stuff while invisible, while taking 
taking no damage. And even if you do take damage, the restoration to your health and shields it provides is just god tier. This is so much survivability rolled into one single exotic. It is incredible. Now, I will mention, if you want to go purely on the offensive, you can use something like the Liar's handshake exotic gauntlets that is going to boost your damage output but at the cost of again a massive amount of survivability the reason we're using the assassin's cowl is that literally anyone can put on this build regardless of skill level and the cow will keep you alive baby now moving on from there i do want to mention the important artifact mods you want so obviously uh, authorized mods arc and authorized mods melee is going to come up then you want a Electric armor, you want thunderous retort, you really want amped up for that damage resistance, and then, you know, lightning strikes twice, we're not a grenadier build, but hey, why not, we're obviously still throwing arc grenades, and then lastly, you really do want shock and awe, arc final blows, while you're amplified, summon a burst of lightning that damages and jolts targets, so we are just doing like double jolts sometimes, it is just broken. Now, moving on from there guys, in terms of our weaponry, the primary really doesn't matter, use whatever you want, but the secondary, you want a shotgun specifically with one, two punch. Hitting an enemy with every pellet in a shot increases melee damage for a short duration. So you've seen in the background gameplay, when I encounter a yellow bar enemy, I'm able to, you know, dodge, get the jolt ready, and then I shoot my shotgun and then melee for a ton of extra damage. And then I just do it again, shoot, melee, shoot, melee, and you can have that combo to take down you know, pretty much everything from yellow bars all the way up to end game champion enemies. You can really take them down fast. Now, I'm using the found verdict because it's arc, and so it gets benefit from my surges that we'll go over in a sec, but you can absolutely use something uh, like the Wastelander, which is a craftable kinetic shotgun that can get one-two punch. Anything with one-two punch will work. And then after that, guys, for our exotic weapon, we're actually going with the Legend of Acrius. I was actually running a tractor cannon before so I could weaken enemies and then do my melee shenanigans. That would be great. But seeing how powerful the Legend of Acrius was after one phasing the first dungeon boss, yeah, I think I'm going to use this thing. So it actually got a big buff. The range is more substantial. And importantly, guys, uh, the Catalyst now gets Trench Barrel, which is exactly what you want in a melee build. So you start off with that jolting melee, and remember, jolt is gonna weaken the target, and then you hit like a truck, you hit harder than Direct Impact Rocket Launcher with the Legend of Acrius after, and you've got three whole rounds before Trench Barrel runs out. You can take down Grandmaster Champions easy peasy with this thing. Now, moving on from there, let's talk about those armor mods. So, first of all, starting with the helmet, we have double hands-on. We are getting so many melee kills, so we're getting our Gathering Storm a lot, and we're actually also using Font of Wisdom just for even more super spam. Then after that, guys, uh, we do have Arc Loader. Why not? Then importantly, you do want a heavy handed. As you can imagine, this is kind of your main source of uh, orb generation and also a Font of Vigor because, you know, why not? You don't get two orbs for two heavy handeds, you just get a more powerful orb and we don't really need our super anymore. So again, just getting that consistency is great. Moving on from there, we have the trifecta of resistances. Obviously change this depending on what activity you're doing. Then importantly, we just have triple arc weapon search. You could replace one of these with elemental charge. As you can imagine, we're generating a ton of, of ionic traces, but I did not find getting armor charges hard at all with this build. So just going all in on if you do need to whip out your Acris and melt something, I think that is the appropriate solution. And then lastly, guys, for our class item, this is actually very important. So importantly, we do have distribution. Reduces all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near targets. So with the amount we're able to spam our class ability, distribution is like pretty incredible. And then we also have Reaper. After using your class ability, again, which is like literally infinitely regenerating, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. So, so easy. 
to get that free gambler's dodge and just kill something with a shotgun to get that orb if you do need it, if you find yourself wanting uh, some arc surges active or whatever. And then also why not a bomber just to have a lot more grenade energy as well for how often uh, we are spamming our class ability. Now, I should mention that you could instead use a special ammo finisher so you always have ammo for your one-two punch shotgun. However, I really didn't find ammo to be an issue because I was jolt killing so many enemies, I would really only use my shotgun on the more powerful enemies, which were a little bit less infrequent, so up to you. And so guys, there you have it. At the end of the day, you have an incredibly powerful melee build that is benefiting from, of course, the absurdity of all of the uh, seasonal artifact arc mods. Like the amplification lasting longer is great for your build. The damage resistance is great for your build. Jolting enemies is great for your build. Throwing more grenades is great for your build. And you're combining that with that assassin's cowl. I think that is kind of like the key to this melee build for using it, you know, in a variety of content. If you're doing lower level stuff, you might not need that degree of survivability, but I've taken this into stuff like solo lost sectors, nightfalls, etc., and I just can't die thanks to the Assassin's Cowl. Such a good build. Highly recommend trying it out, guys. That is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.